osteosarcoma. It is essential to equip ourselves with knowledge that will aid us in understanding and treating this challenging disease. Let's quickly jump into the topic. Myself, Dr. Kadir Stalin. Osteosarcoma characterized by spindle cell neoplasms producing osteoid. There are several forms exist for this disease, each with its own distinct features. In primary types, we encounter high-grade central sarcoma, low-grade central sarcoma, surface osteosarcoma, which could be high-grade or low-grade surface osteosarcoma, and telangiectatic osteosarcoma. Other variants may include paraosteal osteosarcoma, periosteal osteosarcoma, multicentric osteosarcoma. Secondary osteosarcoma can happen with diseases like Paget's disease and bone lesions and post-radiation cause. The high-grade intramedullary osteosarcoma is also called as classical osteosarcoma. It is the most common osteosarcoma and it primarily affects children and young adults around the knee, which means distal femur or proximal tibia. Yet, a second peak may manifest in the late adulthood as well. Other common sites of involvement includes the proximal humerus, proximal femur, pelvis, etc. The hallmark symptom is pain. It is also accompanied by some radiographic evidence of bone destruction and bone formation. More than 90% of the patients with intramedullary osteosarcomas are high grade and already presents to you with the cortex breached. Thereby, you will feel a soft tissue mass as well. About 10 to 20% of the affected patients have pulmonary metastasis at the time of presentation. Traditionally, Amputation was the primary treatment for osteosarcoma, but the survival rates were disheartening, ranging from a mere 10% to 20%. However, the advent of multi-agent chemotherapy has brought a new era of hope. Through the administration of doxorubicin, cisplatin and methotrexate, long-term survival rates have witnessed a dramatic improvement. Limb salvage procedures have become a possibility, sparing the patient the trauma of amputation. Chemotherapy is administered before the surgery known as neoadjuvant chemotherapy for a period of 8 to 12 weeks. Afterwards, the tumor is surgically resected followed by adjuvant chemotherapy. It plays a crucial role in eliminating micrometastasis and sterilizing the reactive zone surrounding the tumor. Firstly, lung and then the bone are the most common sites of spread or metastasis, so diligent monitoring is warranted. Other than X-rays, diagnostic modalities such as MRI and CT helps in assessing the osteosarcoma's extent, especially the intramedullary extension, involvement of neurovascular structures and muscular invasion. In this X-ray shows an osteosarcoma in the femur, which means the thigh bone. Note the formation of new bone in the typical sunburst pattern. When viewed from the side, the Codman triangle can also be seen rising from the bone. So the Codman triangle and the sunburst appearance are nothing but a periosteal reaction to the growing tumor. Histologically, the diagnosis relies in the presence of tumor cells producing the osteoid and stromal cells. In this MRI, you can see the intramedullary extension and also the metaphyseal extension, the periosteal elevation, etc. Several prognostic factors can adversely affect the survival status of the patient. This may include expression of P glycoprotein, high serum level of alkaline phosphatase, high lactic dehydrogenase level, vascular invasion, and no alteration of DNA ploidy after chemotherapy, the absence of anti-shock protein 90 antibodies after chemotherapy, and a poor response to chemotherapy as seen on a histological tumor necrosis indicates a very bad prognosis. I hope you know the association of tumor suppressor gene like retinoblastoma and P53 gene with this tumor osteosarcoma. Now, let's learn paraosteal osteosarcoma. It is a low-grade surface variant. It often presents as a painless mass on the metaphysis of the long bone. This tumor has a peculiar affinity to the posterior aspect of the distal femur. But other common sites could be proximal tibia and proximal humerus. Radiographically, we observe a heavily ossified lobulated mass originating from the posterior aspect of the distal femur in this picture. 
Resection with a wide margin is the preferred treatment with an excellent prognosis in most of the case. Since it's low grade, no need for chemotherapy. The intermediate grade periosteal osteosarcoma deserves our attention as well. It manifests in the diaphysis of the long bone with a characteristic radiographic appearance of sunburst type lesion atop a saucerized cortical depression. The chondroblastic histology places it between the low grade periosteal osteosarcoma and a high grade intramedullary osteosarcoma in terms of the prognosis. That is the reason why we call this as an intermediate grade periosteal osteosarcoma. I repeat, this is because of the chondroblastic histology. Preoperative chemotherapy, surgical resection and the maintenance of chemotherapy form a preferred treatment approach with a 10% to 15% risk of pulmonary metastasis. Let's encounter the rare high-grade surface osteosarcoma. Radiographically, it appears as a mixed lytic and sclerotic aggressive surface lesion in the metaphysis or diaphysis of the long bone. Its treatment and prognosis align with those of conventional osteosarcoma and no different from high-grade intramedullary osteosarcoma. Lastly, telangiectatic osteosarcoma. Tissue of this lesion can be described as a bag of blood with few cellular elements. Radiographic features of telangiectatic osteosarcoma are those of destructive lytic expansor lesion. Telangiectatic osteosarcoma occur in the same location as an aneurysmal bone cyst and radiographic appearance of both can be really confused. So extreme attention is needed while interpreting these kind of x-rays. In conclusion, our understanding of osteosarcoma continues to evolve. The long-term survival rate ranges from 60% to 70% indicating still a room for improvement. Through multimodality approach and advancement in chemotherapy and precise surgical intervention, we strive to improve the long-term survival rates and enhance the quality of life for those affected. Please tell us what you think about this video. We will try hard to improve the quality of the content we deliver. We respect your feedback. Thank you.